everyone to another episode of Keto Chat. I'm your host, Carol Freeman, certified nutritionist. I'm here to talk to Dr. Nally about his brand new book. Cool. Oh my gosh. Well, we're going to talk about the book, but just for, you know, the three people that are watching this that haven't met you or don't know who you are, <laughs> will, you, will you please tell us who you are who all the way out here in Arizona? Well, I am. You, you came out to sunny Arizona yeah. um, right now. The uh, It's... Uh, I think it's about 75 degrees right now. I know. Probably. I know. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board-certified family physician and a board-certified obesity medicine specialist. Um, started doing family medicine about 18 years ago and about five years in realized 85% of the people that I saw had major uh, illness associated with obesity. And so I went back to get trained as an obesity doc. In the process of learning to treat obesity, um, found that, that the, the lifestyle or the dietary approach that seemed to be the most effective um, for this group that I treat on a regular basis is the ketogenic diet. Okay. So about 13 years ago, just dove in headlong, um, realizing that if I started asking people to eat more fat and more protein, that um, a lot of a lot of my colleagues would ostracize me and think I was a quack. So yeah. what I wanted to do was to be literally the expert in the fat and protein and ketogenic world. And so I just began doing everything I could to, to learn about what's going to be helpful for patients uh, and what, what does the science actually say? What's fact and what's fiction? Yeah. And so for the last 13, 14 years, that's what I've been doing. Uh, it led to me putting together lots of information, podcasts, blogs, and, and now a book that I found yeah. would be helpful. So, yeah. so congratulations. Thank you Your very first much. book, right? First book, yes, first book. What was it like writing this book? Like, How relieved are you to be done? Well, you know, we, we planned, and let me, my phone keeps pinging, so pardon me, I meant to turn this off beforehand. Um, the... Uh, the, the really cool thing about the book is that, well, I thought it was going to be done in about a, in about a year. Um, because of the life of a doctor, that didn't really happen. Yeah. And it took me a lot longer. It took uh, almost two years to, to really put everything together and get the pieces in, in place. Uh, and for the publisher to, you know, to do everything that publishers do with mm-hmm. a new book once you do it. Um, and so it took a little longer than I thought it would take. Um, but it's, it's, it's very relieving and very exciting to... Yeah. Got it done. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't say the name of it. It's called The Keto Cure, mm-hmm. a low carb, high fat dietary solution to heal your body and optimize your health. So um, official release date uh, April 10th, 2018. April 10th. Mm-hmm. So some of you seeing this, probably by the time you're seeing this, is going to be out. So you can oh, get it God, wherever yeah. books are sold. Hey, wherever and, books uh, are sold, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, and so who's the book for? So originally when Jimmy Moore and I were doing um, Keto Talk together, I told Jimmy, I, hey, I have this book in my head. I have this outline in my head. And I said, I, I'm, I'm interested in publishing. He goes, well, hey, let's do a book. And I told him about what the outline was and what I was interested in doing. And knowing Jimmy had a great, a great publisher, he said, well, let's, let's pitch it to the publisher and see what the publisher says. Yeah. So that's, so that's an, that ended up, what we ended up doing is, is uh, presenting it. And um, <clears throat> the book was really written... Um, it's written in a way that um, I sat down and, and said, well, how do you write a book like this? And I thought, well, what would, what would my patients want to get? If I walked into an exam room yeah. and the patient said, I, Dr. Nally, I have gout, and I don't understand how does this diet work with gout, well, I wanted to be able to give them some information. So it's actually a lot of the information that is in there are bits and pieces of what I actually use in conversation with my patients every day. Uh, they're, they're pieces of what come out of my chart system for them that print out when they when they walk out of the room. Um, there are modules that I've actually written for patients to hand them and say, okay, this is what I want you to understand about how the diet works. And so I looked at this book saying, if you if you were with me one-on-one in the exam room, what, what, would, what would help you the most in explaining how this disease works and how the diet is, applies to it, and what else helps that disease improve? Okay. And so that's really what it is. It's I, I picked the... 10 or 12 most common things that I saw and said, this is, this is what I do on a regular basis. Um, how can I take it from medical ease into, into layman's terms and make it easy for you or the average person to understand? Nice. Okay, so if you're a patient mm-hmm. of any doctor, this is for you. Um, what I also thought would be great as well is that, you know, it's great for the patient to read and understand what's going on and then to have a conversation with their doctor. Exactly. Because... The, uh, the things that you're explaining and the fact that you've got names of medications and things in here, the doctor's going to recognize that this was written by somebody who knows what they're talking about. Yeah. It's not just some, you know, whatever book for dummies that exactly. anybody wrote, right? So yeah. um, Exactly. And when most people come to me, they say, okay, well, Dr. Nelly, uh, I'm on these medicines and, and, and I want to do this diet. 
well, what can I expect from the diet, mm -hmm. and, and what can I expect from the medicines? And then, are there any other alternative things I can do? Is there are there are there, are there supplements I can add? Are there herbal products I can add? Um, is there other pieces of activity that will be beneficial for my lifestyle if I do this with that disease process? And and I and what I what I wanted to be able to do is if someone had the book and they were with their doctor, they could say, well, based on these articles that are here, mm -hmm. the, where the citations are, you know, I should use this medicine, but I should be cautious of this medication. Yeah. And then that's a conversation that you, you know you have with your doctor, and your doctor knows you really well, so he knows the pros and cons of using a medicine or a supplement, and so he can actually have a good conversation with you. And that way you can actually have something that helps you understand why he wants you to use this medicine or why he would recommend not using that medicine. Yeah. Or she, he or she, you know, however yeah. that works. But, so it's yeah. a patient empowerment book. Hopefully <laughs> that's what it is. Hopefully it's empowering, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the other thing I want to ask about then too is this, um, gosh, uh, every day I talk to people that are, you know, deciding to embark on a keto diet or thinking about it, They, um, their doctors told them that, well, they're overweight, so that's why they have diabetes. Or they're overweight, and that's why they have hypertension. And if I just need to get the weight off, and then my high, high blood pressure is going to go away. Can you can you speak to that? And I try to people people can't hear it because they've been told for so long that obesity causes all these things. Well, and it's the it's the chicken or egg issue. Um, you know, when I came out of medical school, we were told that the weight was what caused the diabetes, or the yeah. weight caused the cholesterol issues, the weight caused this problem. And so people want to get the weight off. And we and then we've been told that you just have to exercise to get the weight off, but exercise mm -hmm. doesn't work. And we know that. And you, you know, I've, I know it. Thousands of patients have tried it. It doesn't work. And you can't outrun a bad diet. Yeah. Um, and so um, what we're learning and what I've learned in the last you know, 13 or 14 years in doing this is that the weight is a symptom, although the weight, the obesity itself is a disease, and, and thankfully we've been able to identify it as a disease, it's also a symptom of an underlying disease process called insulin resistance. And that insulin resistance is what drives the weight gain. It's an overproduction of insulin in response to starches and sugars. And all of us have a variable degree of that response, and in some cases it's, it's a syndrome, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a disease, it means that your body is responding genetically um, to certain food types, and that genetic response either predisposes you to weight gain or not, and that, and then there's a number of reasons for that. Um, my personal opinion is that years ago, before we had Bisquick and beer and we had refrigerators, that that insulin production actually helped people to, to survive mm -hmm. harsh winters or harsh summers, yeah. and, and so there, there's a reason for it, but when we apply the standard American diet, now that genetics that, that genetics is, a, is predisposing you to gaining weight. Mm -hmm. That those genetics and those hormone responses are also predisposing you to disease, disease processes that always come along with the weight gain. Mm -hmm. So you know if you if you you know it's kind of like the blind man looking at the elephant. You know uh, if you always see the trunk when you see the That's elephant. Too, yeah, yeah <laughs> you're, you're gonna if you always see the trunk of the elephant, you're always gonna think an elephant has a trunk. You know, mm -hmm. and but what if elephants don't have trunks? Mm -hmm. And so that's you know one of the questions is we have to ask our, ourselves: Is the weight really the issue? Um, none of the science says it's the weight, although mm -hmm. the weight's always an associated issue mm -hmm. with that disease process. Um, what we're finding is that if we, and what I've seen for over the last 13, 14 years, is that when I am able to decrease hormone response to starch, both obesity and the mm -hmm. blood pressure, or both obesity and cholesterol, they're better. Yeah. If that makes well, sense. Well, another piece of the puzzle is that there are people out there that have type 2 diabetes that aren't overweight. Exactly. Um, or that have heart attacks. Exactly. And uh, I've, I've talked to people that say like, well, my husband, he's fine because he's normal weight. He can eat whatever he wants. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, and, you know, and, and there yeah, are those people. But there are those people. They're, 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 they're scale weight, normal weight, but metabolically they're sick. And so yeah. if you look at their metabolism, and that's one of the things that, that your doctor does is he's not only looking at how you look on the exam table, but he's also looking at what your triglycerides mm -hmm. are, what's your insulin, what's your hemoglobin A1C, what are, you know, what, what do these numbers metabolically mean? Um, and it's amazing how many people I see who are normal weight yet metabolically sick. Mm, and yeah. that's driven heavily by these processes, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, so I want to ask about, probably a lot of people watching are wondering, Keto Talk was my favorite podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you so much, but I understand. You've got a lot of stuff going on, but do um, you have anything else planned there? Or, uh, you know, well, the now that you're not, not writing a book, no, you I'm not writing a book, exactly. Time. <laughs> well, yeah, we, my wife says, are you going to actually be home now? Um, <laughs> Well, I was home, but are you actually going to be present? Um, you know, I love doing keto talk. It was actually a lot of fun. The big, the biggest challenge was that the, there's there was for every hour we did in, in keto talk, mm -hmm. I was putting four to six hours of prep time in. 
Um, and that's four to six hours is a, is a whole day in, in yeah, an office. Yeah. And so the challenge was I was having to reschedule um, office time and mm -hmm. it was interfering with my ability to provide care for patients. Yeah. Um, and it was taken away from family time and all the things that were, were essential for my, my life and my early family. Yeah. So I had to make a, a big decision is in, you know, will Keto Talk, although the great benefit was there, um, when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of doing what you gotta do every day, yeah. I, I had to say something has to give. Yeah. And so I knew the book would be important. Um, I wanted to continue with that, but but Keto Talk itself, <clears throat> there's there's a bunch of great people out there that understand a lot of things, and so uh, my hope is that now, at once I'm um, we have the book in place, um, I'm in the process of revamping my website, creating some membership sites um, that provide um, access for people to 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 get more, um, I guess you could say one on one time with me, okay. um, without having to <clears throat> without having to actually be in my office. Mm. And so uh, I'm looking to see how can we, um, you know, think outside the box in regards to medicine and diet, um, because in, in, with medicine it's so hard to, to create that doctor patient relationship without, you know, being in my exam room. And, and unfortunately, with insurance and the way things are going, it yeah. gives you five minutes, which isn't enough time yeah. to really help people. So um, I am I, I do a lot of live streaming. So if you if you check my website, you can see all the live streams that are there. Um, I answer a lot of questions that way, and I'm actually looking in the future for uh, uh, down the road, and I don't know when yet, but I'm, I still have in the back of my mind maybe another podcast or even a, a video type um, uh, broadcast that we could do. Yeah, because you're very active on, um, I know Facebook mm -hmm. Live, so you're still doing Periscopes as well? I actually dual stream, so I, okay. do, I, do, I do Facebook and Periscope at the same time. Okay. The, the Facebook Live is what actually gets saved and what gets put, put in my website. But I've got a whole group of followers on Periscope that are the, okay. the, uh, the, the those that are hanging in on Periscope yeah. that still watch okay. um, when I do live stream. The biggest challenge with, with that is <clears throat> I have to have bandwidth to do it. Yeah. So if I'm in my office or at home, I can actually live dual stream. But if, uh, if I'm out and about, it's usually just Facebook Live. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so one of the things that I think, uh, oh man, was it in here, that I was most shocked about was how... Um, ratings of the doctor based on are you prescribing enough of these medications that are the normal ones that people get prescribed for these yep. and how you can get docked uh -huh. how much you pay uh -huh. no pun intended docked um, doc how much uh, <laughs> uh, you get paid per patient if you're not prescribing enough medications and that mm -hmm. was so eye-opening for me really to realize yeah I had no idea that was going on behind the scenes and it, it explains a lot because I have a um, you know, one of my cohorts uh, from past year that's a practicing yeah. uh, nutritionist in Seattle area was saying how she went into a clinic to shadow another dietitian and, and they were seeing a, a type 2 diabetic patient and uh, my friend said like, well, why are we not trying a low carb diet with this person? You know, I, I've heard that it can help people get off their medications and the dietitian said like, well, why would we want to get them off their medications? And my friend was like scratching her head and she didn't really understand and now it's like, oh, it makes sense to me now. But it's just, it's, it's crazy making. So, so this, this era that we now live in, which is one of the struggles that most physicians do, and, and, you know, you, and you can call it pay for performance or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. <clears throat> um, you know, insurance plans and, and the government have had to figure out ways to determine, are you a good doctor? Are you practicing based on, you know, this current normal guidelines yeah um, and the challenge is that those normal guidelines are following um, you know uh, science that's 15 years old yeah and so you know the di the guideline even today I've got plans that actually will ding me mm. if you know 70 or 80 percent of my patients aren't on statin drugs I actually get a financial I'm financially de-incentivized oh. to, to if I if they're not on those those statins or if they're not on a you know, beta blocker for their for their you know if they had heart disease um, yeah. Statistically, the data shows that people who've had heart disease um, who are on a beta blocker have, have better long-term outcomes. Mm. However, that statistic is only between with the beta blocker and without a beta blocker. There's yeah. no statistics to say, what if they lost 70 pounds yeah. and, they, you know, and their heart functions better? What if, what, how, would they, how would that statistic be there? The challenge is that if you're practicing standard medicine, um, you're going to be um, pushed into both financially and from the science that's there. To, to believing that hey every patient I see you know and it, every every diabetic I see I get a I get a report card on myself mm -hmm. every quarter that says um, you know so many of your patients are on ACE inhibitors so many of your patients are on beta blockers so many of your patients are on statins and so many of your patients you know quit smoking and so many of your patients did um, had their mammogram you know and and, and then I actually get a, I get um, incentivized or de-incentivized based on those statistics wow. which is 
really hard when I'm trying to get people off of statins. Yeah. I'm trying to get people off their blood pressure pills. What a conflict of it's interest. A very, it's a difficult <laughs> arena, and it's just getting harder because they're yeah. tightening those things up even further. Um, so one of the challenges is to make sure that those, those incentives are based in real science. Um, but when there's a 15-year lag, yeah. it, that's hard to do. And yeah. so, well, it, it seems like it would make sense that the metric would be, are people getting off their medications because they're getting well and they're reversing these mm -hmm. diagnoses, but nobody else is, or most other practitioners out there aren't seeing that, right? They don't no, have the no. tools with no. diet to be able to help people actually reverse these things to get off them. So. And, and, that, and that's one of the reasons I titled the book The Keto Cure. Yeah. Um, we're not necessarily curing all of these major diseases, and that's been one of the arguments that people have said, you should never call it that. Uh, the whole reason the book was titled The Keto Cure was because we are actually essentially curing one of the, the essential underlying hormonal factors that drives these diseases. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we improve or fix that, that hormonal drive, specifically insulin, um, when we fix that insulin resistance, all of a sudden these other diseases improve. Yeah. Um, no one's ever seen, I, I was told in medical school that it was impossible to cure diabetes, yeah. yet I have um, multiple patients that are no longer diabetic by the standard definition. Um, I, have, I had a patient today, she came in, and she was on two blood pressure medicines and a statin drug. Um, she came in today, she's nine months out from starting her weight loss, she's lost 65 pounds, she's off of both of her blood pressure medicines and her statin drugs, and her cholesterol's pristine and her blood pressure's 120 over 70. How can you be? How can you balk at that? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So so, and she feels great. She's saving money. She feels better, and mm -hmm. she's going to live probably twenty or thirty years longer. Yeah, yeah. Yet, if her insurance company just looks at a piece of paper, I'm going to get dinged if, yeah. if she's on one of those plans because I'm I don't have her on a statin. Right. And that's the hard part is mm -hmm. is helping to change medicine to understand some of these diseases are curable. Yeah. Well, and they're not looking at how much money they're saving and not paying exactly. off those three medications <laughs> for her. Exactly. Month. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. So, what what else should people know about the book? What else? Uh, well, go? number one. Um, so many people know Jimmy Moore. So I want to make sure that Jimmy gets uh, some credit where he's he got credit due there. Um, Jimmy, having interviewed thousands and thousands of, of people who've done low carb and ketogenic diets and fasting, all those kind of things, um, actually gives commentary as we go through that mm -hmm. and tries to help take some of what I explain and, and even break it down even further. So see you'll see little, you'll see little blurbs off the side. On the note. side of um, uh, of. Uh, if we can get the screen, there we go, on the side with little Jimmy, uh, little cartoon. Little cartoon Jimmy <laughs> on the side. So he, yeah, he's, he jumps in there and he gives these great little little blurps of, of information and adds adds to it. And a lot of people we found, we've actually found um, that a lot of people learn really well with block type mm -hmm. learning. And mm -hmm. so you read a block and then you, then you slightly change the subject and you go on to the next block. And your ability to retain is a whole lot better that okay. way. So this was written in a way to hopefully be easy to read to. Um, both a book that you can read, but also a reference book. Yeah. Um, and then, wonderfully, Maria Emmerich um, sat down and she literally slaved for hours and hours and probably days and days yeah. <laughs> um, over 60 really amazing recipes in there. So um, I, I looked around, uh, and uh, since Maria was one of those first few people that literally provided some of the, the, um, the uh, recipes for my family to make a change, I wanted to give her the option to say, hey, can you add to this book and give us 60 really great recipes? And she did. She gave some phenomenal recipes in there. So yeah. um, not only is it a book to talk about disease and how to improve that disease, but it's also a cookbook mm -hmm. um, in, in providing some great recipes. Um, yeah. We just we just made the, uh, the, the low-carb ice cream in there, and it's, it's, a, it's a crossover between custard and ice cream, and it's, it is yummy. So oh, it's like that, yeah. I'm, every recipe I've ever tried of hers has been delicious. So. They're, they're really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're, I, they're I, not I, really difficult. They're, 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 they're actually, they're, they're easy enough that Dr. Nally can make. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, yeah. Well, I'm super excited for your book here. Um, any Anything else that we should share about or anything else like that? You've got some... No, uh, just, you know, grab the book, get a copy, read it, and then let me know about it. I want to hear about it. You can find me at docmuscles.com, and um, that's, you know, I'm all over the internet at, on, at docmuscles. Yeah. Um, you know, give, give me some input, give us some feedback. I'd love to hear how, how you like it, what, what's, what you find helpful, um, you know, what you would like to see further if, if we were to add to it or do to make some changes what what, what, what would help cure two. could there be a cure, cure two or you know what else can we do that's 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 the cool Excellent. thing yeah well thank you so much for letting me come in in the middle of your day i'm literally here on his lunch break to talk to him and squeezed well, we, in between all the other things you got going on so i really appreciate it oh no, thank you we're looking forward to it we, i got a you. chance to meet you was it two years ago yeah two, two years, years ago, ago we did our first interview yeah that was yeah. great and so when you called up i said yeah come it's great. Uh, so yeah, awesome. great. So, well, I got to close with my normal question, though, of like, uh, 
the meteors coming to Earth, we're all going to get wiped out today, you know, it's your last, last day on the planet, like what's going to be your final meal? My final meal, I am going to smoke a really nice brisket. And, uh, we're going to know a days in advance. So oh, yeah, we'll, we'll see it coming. So I'm going to smoke a few briskets, and I'm going to have brisket every every day before the meteor hits. All right, right. <laughs> a little bacon on the side, though? You got probably, to put bacon in I'll right? probably put bacon on there. So, so, yeah, you know, bacon is the pixie dust of, of the culinary world. Oh. Um, but, it, but, yeah, a little bacon and brisket. Excellent. Sounds delicious. So, hey, thank everybody. Thank everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. No, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you want to see more. I've got all of Doc Nelly's uh, uh contact info below in the show notes there so uh we'll uh we'll see you again soon